your citizens pay attention to Octo Directo, Ms. UA and Octo Directo. I'm used to getting strange messages from politicos in the U.S., but the vote now tests are going out to Filipinos in the U.S. who are dual citizens. Don't forget to vote by May 13th. And don't forget to vote for democracy. Peters was pretty salty last week when he said opposition candidates do nothing but criticize and would go straight to Interno which I believe is just south of Dayo. But the Senate place is in D.C. as anti duders Only as pro-democracy. You want a rubber stand Senate? Or do you prefer fairness, the check and balance it? Remember if you're Filipino in the United States, Duder is as close as it gets to a ground front. They belong to the ADMA, the Authoritarian Mutual Admiration Society. And that's not a good thing. You can try to ignore it and say, Duder's over there. And then run to the stateside jollity. But you'd be burying your head in a bucket of coconut. Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month for those in the U.S. It's here again Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Hey Asian. God bless you. It's not a sneeze. It's something we celebrate in America every year. But a friend of mine seems to be growing weary of it all. Instead of joy for the months when people of Asian American and Pacific Islander descent can feel united and strong in ethnic coalition, my friend has this strange groundhog day feeling. Not that things are repeating until we get it right feel. More like empathy for the little little groundhog, as in, if you see your shadow, it means it's more weak of racial winter or general discontent. You get what I mean? We're still in a long hard slot during what is arguably the most contentious political environment since the civil rights era began. It's not easy being an Asian American during the Trump administration. Not even if you were married to Mitch McConnell. There's uncertainty over data, that census citizenship question, ICE rates, deportation, asylum changes, oops, workplace rights, health care, gentrification, income inequality. Maybe this month, this year, we take a deep breath, count our blessings, and focus instead on others who really are up against it this month. My suggestion for a in person of the month, Philippine journalist Maria Reza. Reza is what I call a unique American Filipino. She was born in the Philippines. Her parents immigrated to the U.S. just before the Marcos Martial Law era. Reza grew up in New Jersey, then went to Princeton. She said she had a choice to stay with family members in the U.S. or return home to make her mark in the Philippines. She chose the latter, where she founded the award-winning news site Rattler, the both a source for hard-hitting truthful journalism about the Philippines. It also has gotten resurrected twice since February, once for an alleged violation of the ban on foreign media ownership and another time for a fever libel case. In New York, City recently to be honored as one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People of 2019, Rep also received a journalism award from Syracuse University. For a journalist, awards are like shields against the threat of arrest and assassination. They're handy in the Philippines, where journalists are killed frequently. Last week, a Manila newspaper with links to Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte printed a matrix like flowchart of journalists from independent sites like Rappler as well as the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism. The chart identified them all as two plotters. And President Tudor, who picked up the fake news mantra from Trump, is taking it all seriously. He's quoted as saying, not so reassuringly, just because you're a journalist, you are not exempted from assassination. You don't take a statement like that lightly from a man whose administration the UN says has killed 27,000 since 2016 in its war on drugs. It's the same shoot muff that's been traced by an envious Trump. Death 27,000. That's not like Trump boasting about shooting one person on 5th Avenue and not losing any voters. Duder has 27,000 likes on his hands and hasn't lost any of his base voters. Some of the deaths were connected to the drug trade. Some were just caught in the middle, total innocents like mothers and children. Rattler and others have been trying to get their hands on the public documents. Most are incomplete, unfiled, or lost. The death has become part of the bureaucracy. 
and yet with all that, Russia has returned to the Philippines ahead of major elections on May 13th that will determine control of the Senate, and the future of the country. There is much at stake this month in America's first colony. Remember, the Philippines was built as a democratic facsimile of the U.S., complete with the Constitution, Bill of Rights, and the three branches of government. There are checks and balances now against autocratic rule, but probably not if Duders manages to win control of the Senate in the upcoming elections. And wait, that a new form of government. That's how quickly it can all go in a few weeks if the Senate quits. We have a president who remains unimpeached and united it. Is he a but the law? Do you feel our constitutional crisis yet? That's why it's not far to think what happens next in the Philippines could easily happen here if we let our guard down. The Philippines is a cautionary tale for the United States, Russia said on Democracy Now. What shocked me is how fast things can change. And I think Americans need to be aware that the things that you think have been there for a very long time, it can turn on a dime. And within six months in the Philippines, all of a sudden it's okay to kill. If you look at Cambridge Analytica, that scandal, the most number of compromised accounts are in the United States. The country, with the second most number of compromised accounts is the Philippines. You can do a lot with the technology that is there. And if your leader is pushing top down, society can transform. Your institutions are still pushing back. But the same thing that I tell to Latinos, now is the time to fight for your rights. If you do not fight for these rights, they can be taken away, and it can happen quickly. Fighting for justice and democracy is always a worthy goal for a agent. That's what Reza, who grew up an American but battles now as a Filipina in her home country, is up against this May. If you're one of the more than 125,000 dual citizen Filipino Americans eligible to vote from the U.S., she can use your help. Don't forget to cast your vote. This time, it really matters. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.